Greetings, I am Dr. Julie Berry, first lady at the Green Forest Community Baptist Church. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to join our Women's Day festivities. We're going to get started on September 21st with our brunch, and we're going to have a phenomenal menu. Our speaker is going to be none other than Darlene McCoy. Mommy, do you mean Darlene, 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 Darlene McCoy on a nightly spirit? Time to turn up the radio. That is absolutely right, Jaden. We will have Darlene McCoy as our guest speaker for our Women's Day brunch. Then we will have our 745 and 1045 Sunday services with the Reverend Dr. Constance Abbott. If you ain't helping me do what God has called me to do, then I'm going to disconnect, baby. We would love for you to come and join us Saturday, September 21st and Sunday, September 22nd here at Green Forest Community Baptist Church. And remember, there is always favor at the forest. Sometimes uh, we want to clean folk up, we want to dress them up, we want to tell them how to dress. Uh, but guess what? Uh, you got to first uh, catch the fish before you clean the fish. Preach, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. I needed that. Thank you, Jesus. I needed that. Preach, I needed that. Thank you, man. I needed that. This is the day that the Lord has made and we certainly want to rejoice and be glad in it. We are so excited about today's message because it reminds us that all of us are going through a construction zone. Living in the metro Atlanta area, we're familiar with construction. Normally three things take place. One, they're filling potholes. Secondly, they're resurfacing the road. And then thirdly, we find that they're widening the roads. You'll find as you journey on this thing called life that God will send you through a construction zone. Today we're gonna to learn about Saul, whose name turns to Paul, where he goes to his own construction zone. Tune in and I promise you, you're gonna be blessed. One of the highlights and desires of every teenager is to one day get their driver's license. As most of us can recall back to our own teenage years, that one of your biggest ambitions was to have your driver's license so that your parents hopefully will lend you their car and allow you to go to and fro. I look forward to driving because then my grandmother won't have to do the task because she dress the task of taking me everywhere and I do a lot. What I found very interesting, Sister Wright, about that process is that whenever you take your driver's exam, it is usually during perfect conditions, amen. Uh, the sun is shining bright. Uh, and so the test of uh, taking, uh, taking that driver's test uh, can give you the illusion uh, because you took the test during perfect conditions that you in fact know how to drive. But the reality for those who are experienced drivers, you know that there will be times when you are driving uh, and you're not in perfect, uh, pitch perfect conditions. There are times when you have to navigate the road uh, when there is rain and there are storms going on outside. There are times as you drive your vehicle that uh, every now and then you have to navigate icy roadways and even sometimes snow that are on the busy highways and byways. And every now and then you find yourself having to go through a construction zone. Somebody say construction zone. Those construction zones, my brothers and sisters, are often marked by signs and cones uh, to let you know to slow down your speed uh, because construction is taking place. Usually in those construction zones, you will find that they are either doing one of three things. They are filling potholes that are in the road. They are secondly resurfacing the road that you are on, or they may be widening the road that you find yourself traveling through. Well, I want to let you know that as you go through this thing called life, you will find yourself traveling through your own construction zone. You'll find yourself when you're following the will of God and the hand of God, that there will be times where God will cause you to uh, decelerate your speed so that he might fill the potholes that are in your life. There are times where God will cause you to slow down uh, so that he might resurface uh, you in ways that you might be better off in the end uh, than you were in the beginning. But then there are also times as you travel down life 
uh, life's roadway, that God will also slow you down so that he might widen and expand your capacity so that you might get to where he's trying to take you to. Well, as we look in our text today, we find a young man by the name of Saul who finds himself in the midst of a, of a construction zone. My brothers and sisters, as you study the life of Saul, you will find that there's some interesting characteristics about this man by the name of Saul as he goes through the construction zone of life. The first thing we ought to know about Saul is that he was a persecutor of the church. The Bible tells us that it was Saul that stood by when that deacon by the name of Stephen was stoned. And he was one that was willing to drag Christians out of their home because he did not believe in Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells us it was there on that Damascus road that God knocked Saul off of his horse to get his attention and to ask the question, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? My brothers and sisters, maybe you've been there before. Maybe it wasn't on a Damascus road. Maybe it was on Candler Road, Columbia Road, or Rainbow Drive. But God had to knock you down uh, to get your attention. Do I have at least one witness in here today? Uh, and one of the things that we find that when Paul has this encounter with God, that he goes from being a persecutor of the church to being a preacher in the church. Now, I must admit that I struggle with this because uh, of all the people that God could have selected and chosen to be a preacher in his church, why in the world would he choose an ex-murderer uh, by the name of Saul? My brothers and sisters, to me, it makes perfect sense for God to choose someone who perhaps sang in the New Ambassador's Choir. After all, it probably makes more sense to choose a young man who is a junior deacon in the church or serving as a junior usher. But the Bible says that God goes outside of the church to call this little thug by the name of Saul and makes him a preacher in God's house. He can use anybody to give glory to God, even a thug. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, that one of the reasons I truly believe that God called Saul to preach is because Saul had what I call street credibility. Somebody say street credibility. You see, street credibility means that Saul, as a life, as a thug, one who was persecuting the church, that the boys uh, on the corner and the people who knew what Saul used to be like uh, would walk away with the testimony that saying that if God can choose this man by the name of Saul, truly God can change anybody else. Paul can change his life. Anybody else can change their life. We know, my brothers and sisters, that Saul goes from being a persecutor of the church to being a preacher in the church, but then God elevates him to be a pastor of churches. The Bible lets us know that Paul uh, goes throughout uh, the Asia Minor, uh, not just pastoring churches, but planting churches, but then God ultimately uses Paul to be a penman in his house. Now, in our text, we find with Saul, after being knocked off of his horse there on that Damascus road, that he finds himself among the Damascus disciples. The Bible says that they, after uh, uh, not eating for three days, after being blind for three days, that Saul begins to consume some food, and as a result, he gains his strength. The Bible says that right away, Saul gets baptized, and then uh, he starts preaching in the synagogues. The Bible says that the disciples in Damascus, they embrace Saul. Uh, he's sharing the gospel, the good news news of Jesus Christ. Uh, but then uh, there was this group, this faction that wanted to kill Saul. Saul, as a result, has to leave Damascus. He goes to Jerusalem only to show up in Jerusalem to have the saints of God not believe that he's truly a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not only does Saul have the persecution of people outside the church, but then he has people inside the church who are questioning his salvation and, and, and his conversion. The Bible says that Saul, nevertheless, uh, uh, continues to preach the gospel and he says that he gets uh, to this place where he runs across a man by the name of Barnabas. The Bible says that Barnabas never met Saul a day in his life but he co-signs for Saul. He uh, he vouches for Saul and says listen I was there uh, when, when Saul was preaching the gospel. I was there. Uh, I, I heard about uh, how God had changed his life. But then we see here uh, where Saul as well uh, goes to this place by the name of Tarsus and the Bible says he he preaches and shares the word of God and the church of God grows. Now you must understand that Saul was one who persecuted the church. He gets baptized and now he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, some of y'all missed that. Okay, he got, he got baptized on one day. Three days later, he's preaching the gospel in the synagogues. I got baptized because the Lord, I like, I love the Lord. And when I wasn't baptized, I was doing some bad stuff. So 
Now when I got baptized, I started getting, I started being respectful and everything. That. Brothers and sisters, you ought to be so on fire for God that uh, it don't take you a year to start witnessing, but you want to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Here it is, Paul, my brothers and sisters, the jury is still out, but the disciples in Damascus, they embraced Paul when everybody else was shunning Paul. Okay, let me see if I can make it live. Saul, my brothers and sisters, uh, had not had a chance to, get a, to go get a suit for church. All right. Saul had not had a chance to wash off the blood of the lives that he had helped to persecute. The Bible says that there is a, a, a group of uh, disciples in Damascus that say, Saul, it ain't our job to try to clean you up and fix you up. But we're going to accept you just as you are, uh, because we believe that Jesus works from the inside out. Uh, what's your point, Pastor? Uh, is that sometimes uh, we want to clean folk up. We want to dress them up. We want to tell them how to dress. Uh, but guess what? Uh, you got to first uh, catch the fish before you clean the fish. Preach, Pastor. Amen. First thing we see is despite his past, Saul was able to stay connected to the master's disciples. But secondly, we see in verse 20, it says, At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. The second thing that you ought to believe today is that God called Paul to preach. But the third thing that we ought to know about Paul is that no one could believe that Saul's heart had been converted. In verse 21, it says, All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem? among those who call on this name and hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests notice what happens here is that although god had done a work in saul's lives the people did not believe that god had truly changed them i want to encourage you to understand that people will always remind you of your past here it is instead of shouting and celebrating what god has done in his life they begin to remind him of the person that he used to be. Yeah, I try to do good, but it always ends up in the way. But you don't give up like Paul, right? Nope. And my brothers and sisters, maybe they suffer from what we call spiritual amnesia. That they forgot that all of us are an ex something. All right, y'all gonna make me call the roll this morning? All of us are an ex something. But they forgot about their own sins and began to remind Saul uh, of all the stuff he did in the past. I want to encourage you as you're witnessing and sharing your faith with others, uh, don't get be so heavenly and holy minded that you forget uh, of the sins that you've made in the past. In fact, part of what makes your witnessing so powerful is when you can tell people what you used to do and what you used to be like. I ain't going to get much help there. Maybe you're still doing the same thing. But the, the power of your testimony is not always the fact that you remember book, chapter, and verse. Because there will be times where you're not going to remember the book, chapter, and verse. But you'll never forget your testimony about what the Lord has done for you. Has the Lord done anything for anybody up in here? I don't know about y'all today, but you ought to be transparent about your own mess. You ought to be transparent about your own garbage. And, and we, when people ask you, why do you love them like, I, like you love them? Tell them you don't know my story and all that I've been through in life. But if it were not for Jesus, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. If it weren't for Jesus, I would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. Somebody holler, thank God for Jesus. Lest I hold you the last point, I'm getting out your way. The Bible says in verse 30 and 31, when the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him to Tarsus. Then the church, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria, enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. The Bible says, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. What he's saying, Pastor, is that God took this little, uh, this little thug by the name of Saul and uses him to preach the gospel and as a result people got saved and I tell you my brothers and sisters if God has saved your soul you ought to tell somebody that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world I love the energy I love green forest I love everything I grew up here I'm gonna be here to the day I go and I just love Pastor Barry, and I love what we're doing in the community, so it's a blessing.
Hello, I'm Reverend Diane Phillips Ash, and I would like to invite everybody to join us for Fulfillment Hour. Perhaps to you, you refer to it as Sunday School. God bless, God bless. But we believe at Green Forest that small groups are so important, and that's why we have 122 units ranging from preschool to adults, and we want you to come and join us. It's an opportunity for you to learn about Jesus and an opportunity for you to share your ideas. We couldn't do that during service, but please join us. Come and we'll sign you up on the spot. Go to the class of your choice and we will enroll you then. But join us for Green Forest Fulfillment Hour. Hello, my name is Miss Lou, and I am so excited to welcome you to Open Mic. We have an amazing show lined up every time we come out, and I want you to meet us there with your gifts and your talents so we can all just praise and worship God. And please, 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 please bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your aunties, cousins, and uncles, and meet us here at Looking Up. I cannot wait to see you for our next Open Mic, taking place on Friday, August the 23rd, from 8 to 11 p.m. Will my real Christians please stand up? Because there is work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, and I need you to be sheep amongst wolves and not wolves amongst sheep. Be about your father's business in the day and meditate on him when you sleep. See, at first I admit I was a full-time wolf, but a sheep on the side. I used to represent the world boldly while hiding my spirituality inside. See, you couldn't pick this Christian up out of a lineup even if I told you my name. Because the actions of minds in the world were pretty much the same. I mean, my motto, the party don't start till I walk in. That was all right with me. Because I was the baddest chick with just an occasional sin. Boasting about the things that I did and didn't do while judging my neighbor as if God had told me to. See, I was hired by God, but I was working for the devil. Instead of building up the kingdom, I was a kingdom rebel. You might even say I was interning for the devil and he was paying me well because I had a high position straight to hell. And at first, crossing over was something I even contemplated in my mind. Until I started looking for the benefit packages of the world in which I couldn't find where was my healer when I needed to be healed. My therapist telling me I can. My lawyer when I needed to plead my case. I guess they were all on God's insurance plan. So there I had to decide which team I was going to be more faithful and true. And as you see, I couldn't have my cake and eat it too. So there again, I stood knocking at God's door, asking him to come into my life and to cleanse me of my sins. Transform this girl from the outside and from within. And without hesitation, God took me in his arms and he welcomed me home. And I knew from that moment on with him is where I belong. So now I've been promoting this gospel like a travel agent with no commission. One of most souls saved with a ticket to heaven is all I'm wishing. Trying to recruit players to a team guaranteed to be victorious. But I need some help trying to depict this eternal life that is none less than glorious. So will my real Christians please stand up because there is work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And I need you to be sheep amongst wolves and not wolves amongst sheep. Be about your father's business in the day. Meditate on him when you sleep. <laughs> Father God, it's me, your son, Echo. I'm about to be transparent with you people. Let it not be in vain. Because of things I experienced, I, I fell in love with lust. But I no longer miss her. And I thank you. You know my story. Raised in Perry, Athens, Georgia, Dina Mays Glory. Mama. I stood in grown men's shoes, but I couldn't fit them, cause I was too young. Sex, drugs, and guns, Jesus. Jesus. I was too young. At four years old, I put my hands on it. A thing like that would really change your plans, won't it? Uh, I knew how to kiss, I knew how to touch. I knew how to hold, knew way too much. I was ashamed, I washed my hands. I was in pain, I was out of my lane. But I was no lowest lane, so Superman wasn't coming. No field drumming to rescue me from different strokes. The 
rain kept falling till the levee broke But today, Lord, oh, nothing feels the same My feelings have changed God renewed my mind Lust has lost the shine Nothing feels the same My feelings have changed God renewed my mind Lust has lost the shine Lust has lost the shine Lust has lost the shine I, I, I just need a minute to catch my breath Before I dive back in You understand, right? It gets better You never know by looking at me That sex and violence is in my DNA I felt D.O.A. But it would be okay If I could just get to my daddy I went to Athens in the summer then back to living in motels, what a bummer. Hey, but then one day, my mama called my dad up and said, here, Terry, you take him. See, God is a deliverer. Anybody know God is a healer? That means he heals the pain and things that you don't feel. Even if you're numb to it, don't mean it ain't real. This is opening up some old wounds, but God took away the pain and some scars too. When you're going through, it feels awful lonely. But we all go through tests, so we have testimony. Nothing feels the same. My feelings have changed. God renewed my mind. Lust has lost the shine. Nothing feels the same. My feelings have changed. God renewed my mind. Lust has lost the shine. Give me a clean heart so I might serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I How my soul longs to be free, to be whole, renewed, restored, delivered. My soul cries, yes. My spirit screams, freedom! I can see it. I can see the water, Satan trying harder to keep me imprisoned. My life, my past, flashing before my eyes. I made it. The enemy has tried to slay me since I was a child, but I made it into the water each step more empowering than the next. My spirit rejoices. Joy, peace, happiness runs through me. God, trouble the water. He has restored my soul. Thank you, Jesus. I've been made whole. Yes, do you will. Yes, do you wait. Yes, I will go another way. Yes, do you will? Yes, do you wait? Yes, I will go on another way.
Had some ups, took some downs, a lot of pain, yeah. I needed yeah. that. Qualified me for the rain, yeah. that promise time, I'm seeing yeah. that. Got the ghost, got the word, got the grace, no strings uh -huh. attached. Got the fam, got the wife, thanks God, I, I needed, needed that. that. Got some change, wasn't enough, then meet the need, yeah. I seed it. Yeah. Caught broke, made me itch, now I'm good, he, he treated, treated that. that. Sent the word, I heeded uh -huh. that. Just to read, deleted uh -huh. that. And I'll be on that future. Now we're later. That's where you see me at. At the Lord. I needed that. Thank you, Jesus. I needed that. Appreciate it. I needed that. Thank you, man. I needed that. Woo! We needed that. Woo! We needed that. All the time. We needed that. Right on time. We needed that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. I needed that. We needed that. Woo! We needed that. We needed that. We need it then. I used to need a lot of money like at least a stand. I used to need the affirmation like when people clap. I used to think a lot of stuff would keep my peace intact. Now I see anything short of Jesus, just don't leave a doubt. No fail, Moses trip. Saw I died, then David slipped. All this thing keep adding up. But it take God just to pay for this. Jesus, he gon' lead us back. Romans 10 if you need a map. Bloodshed, center tone, high priest, we needed that. I ain't got a say, grown now, I ain't, I ain't got a say, pop and take my shopping bag, God damn, I ain't, ain't got a brag, I tied down some my dollars ass, hey, it's still count small hey, math, how much is that, I ain't got to ask, it was dirt cheap, so I bought, bought the bag. bag, thank you Lord, I needed that, thank you Jesus, I needed that, appreciate it, I needed that, thank you man, I needed that, woo, we needed that, woo, we needed that, all the time, we needed that, right on time, we needed that, hey, thank you Lord, thank you Jesus, Thank you, man. We need a debt. We need a debt. We need a debt. We need a debt. What's up? It's Maurice Broughton, better known as DJ Mercy, Green Forest Song. Just to let you know to come out each month for Open Mic Night. Also, just to let you know, we got poetry. We got the best music going on from line dancing to just the best gospel up-to-date music right now. So just make sure you tune in. Come on out every month it's going to be on a friday so i don't care about what's going on in your life you always need jesus in your life it's your boy dj mercy holla i am so excited to welcome you to our next open mic taking place on friday august the 23rd from 8 to 11 p.m <laughs> We want to encourage you to tune in every first and third Sunday on AIB at 7 p.m. for our latest season of the Green Forest television broadcast. I promise you that there are going to be some principles for practice and lessons for living that are going to bless you in the days to come. We look forward to having you join us. <laughs>